Welcome to the How To Business Show. I am your host, Samuel West, with my co-host team, Dylan Gillison and Matt Wilson. On this episode, our guest is Richard Sullivan. Richard is a world-renowned artist and former professional baseball player with the Atlanta Braves. Born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky, he studied at the Savannah College of Art and Design, also known as SCAD. This is where he received a BFA in illustration. He had the opportunity to play baseball at SCAD and to continue his interest in art and illustration. In 2008, Richard was drafted by the Braves in the 11th round as a junior and played six years of minor league baseball. He returned to SCAD in 2014 to finish his degree and focus exclusively on his artwork. His work has been accepted into the permanent collection of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, the Yogi Berra Museum, and exhibited by the Louisville Slugger Museum and the Kentucky Derby Museum. In 2017, the Atlanta Braves commissioned Richard to create 18 original watercolor paintings and 20 prints for their new stadium, SunTrust Park. The paintings line the corridors of the Champion Suite and the executive offices. In 2019, Richard collaborated with Topps to create 20 paintings for the Momentum Rising card set. The series features bright young MLB stars. Richard's work has been featured nationally on MLB.com, Fox Sports, Fox Sports South, and numerous magazines including the AJC, Kentucky Monthly, Insider Louisville, The Courier Journal, Louisville Magazine, and The Louisville Voice. In today's episode, Richard will elaborate on his story and success in blending the worlds of art, sports, and business. Please enjoy the episode. Well, first off, welcome. We really, really yeah. appreciate you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We'll do those. There you go. All right. Yeah. yeah. God, that stuff's smooth. Yeah, it's great. Let me tell you something about this yeah, don't, yeah, don't tell too many people about it because then all of a sudden it'll be hard to find. And, and when you do find it, it'll be like 400 bucks. Yeah. It is. It, it, should I just call it out? I guess I need to now, right? Whatever. So, it's blade and bow is what it is. Mm-hmm. And you've seen a lot more of it in the liquor stores lately. You know, you've seen into it. And then, so Matt turned me on to this about, I don't know, was it about a month ago? At least, and, yeah. Yeah. And we opened it up and I was like, wow, for the price, it is smooth, it's drinkable, mm-hmm. and it's and it's really good. What's, you, what's your take on it? It's smooth of it for yeah. sure, yeah. Where is it? Where is the distillery? Yeah. Here in Kentucky. Uh, yeah. uh, I think it's a, a, it's a Weller, um, it's a, yeah. Weller family uh, distillery. And I think they age it in like recycled uh, pappy barrels. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. And so it has that toasted uh, yeah, see, well white. Like, yeah. Right. It has that toasted white oak kind of flavor to it. Yeah. yeah. Louisville. Yeah. So yeah, it's in Louisville. I mean, I always like to try new bourbon. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you went to SCAD. Is that I right? I did. Yes. Yeah. I was, it, that's in Atlanta, right? It's in Savannah. Savannah. Well, they, they have a um, another campus in Atlanta. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter wants to go there so bad. Mm-hmm. And I've, I know some girls that went there too as well. And yeah. so she really wants to go there. How was that experience there at Savannah? It was amazing. Um, I was recruited there. I, I didn't even know about SCAD in, in high school until I went to a camp in like Lexington or um, Tennessee yeah. to, um, you know, showcase for baseball. And they were there recruiting for baseball because they have a NAIA program. They had a full athletic program when I was there. And uh, I had, like, graphic design yeah. on my application. And mm-hmm. they were like, you want to come down to SCAD and try out for us? And, um, and I did really well. And so I didn't know about – I didn't know there was an opportunity for me to do art and, you know, baseball yeah. at the same time. So um, for me to get that opportunity was awesome. And, I, you know, it was, I think it's really challenging to play a sport and also be in art school because art school yeah. is, like – Intense. It's not just showing up for that's what I was going to ask you. Lecture yeah. and just yeah. you know yeah. you can you have to do the projects and do all the things. So yeah, and I was going to ask you how could you? I mean, because SCAD's yeah. like one of the top art design schools, if not the nation, if not the world, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so to find that time to do baseball in that, I mean, how'd you do dude, it, dude? Yeah. Did you even sleep? Well, I think it was one day at a time. And, yeah, um, I, I was so focused on baseball because. That, you know, I, I had this artistic ability, but I did not know what I was going to do with it. Yeah. And it was always baseball. Like, that was my first love for until, you know, I was 26. But yeah. Um, but it was a great, it was like a learning experience. And I, it opened me up to so many different possibilities. Yeah. And I met so many, you know, great yeah. teammates, great uh, coaches. Um, 
kind of just got me out of my comfort zone every yeah. single day. So I think as an art school, SCAD is, you know, they've promoted themselves yeah. as the top art school and they, they recruit, you know, they, they bring in a lot of talented people. And I think there's a lot of opportunity if you go there. They're w so well connected in New York and L.A. And I think if if it's the right fit, I wouldn't suggest it if you had to pay yeah. $40,000 out of your right. going to debt. But yeah. um, if you're, you know, I, I got a scholarship. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship. And But if you're passionate about what you want to yeah. do and you, you know the career path when you're that young, I would because some people, when they're that young, they don't yeah. really know what they want to do. They don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, and most artists, yeah. let's be honest. I mean, they don't. They're not athletes, right? I mean, most. I mean, very few do. Right. What, I mean, honestly, I don't think I've ever met an athlete artist like yourself. I mean, they're, yeah. they're rarities. They are, but they're they're out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at Scott, I mean, it was amazing. I think that was the best part about that experience. Is I felt like home. You know, yeah. I didn't in high school. I didn't feel. I didn't fit in. I was an artist and athlete. Yeah. Nobody really understood. Me, you know, I didn't feel understood or seen or anything yeah. like that. So, um, but there was at SCAD, uh, you know, everyone in in that community, in that artist yeah. athlete community, was very similar. So that it made me realize, like, okay, this I'm I'm, you know, there's I'm worth you know yeah. there's worthiness here. So. Yeah. Is that where you got into watercolor? No, I would say watercolor came after baseball. Okay. Um, I, at SCAD, they introduced you to so many different mediums and techniques and things like that. So I didn't really, you know, I was really into charcoal at okay. the time and drawing and, and I think painting, I didn't have a chance to paint because, you know, and um, at school there was like, we would have practice in the morning for like two hours, right. go to class, practice in the afternoon, go to class. So I didn't really have time to like explore what I wanted to right. do. Mm. Um, it was just like, okay, focus, you know, have this goal, have a, you know, have a, this project here, but there was no exploration outside of class. It was, right. um, mm. and, but it also, I, I mean, you had so a lot of guardrails, right? You had a lot of guardrails in place when you were a scan, right? Cause yeah. you mean, try, I was, so I was a manager for the football team here mm. at Louisville, right? Okay. And so yeah. I get the sports acclimate of it, right? Yeah. I grew up in sports, okay. right? So I know the guardrails. I mean, dude, I, I, we would, I'd be out there from five in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, right? right. So I just don't, it was crazy. Cause I see how good, like I saw your charcoal paintings, right? Mm -hmm. Those are badass, man. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. Like the, the skylines, the cities oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I saw I that, that, man. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. That was yeah. great. Thank you know you. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, man, that's, that's, that's really cool. You yeah. know? And that's why I was like, you know, so you did a lot of that in SCAD too as well. Yeah. I yeah. think it was playing, you know, trying to figure out what, what your passion is and yeah. what your, um, what you enjoy and then you're pushing yourself too. Yeah. So you're they're they're pushing you outside your comfort zones and um, you're learning. I think yeah. SCAT has, they have like 10 art history classes you have to take throughout the four right. years. So you're just learning and learning and learning. Did and, they do any business classes when you were there? To no, I think that's one of the things that if they focus, like they should have like 10 business classes. Right. Instead of art history, they should have yeah. like a lot more business classes because, you know, as an illustration or even a fine artist, like it's really challenging to be out in the business world and know, you know, know your worth, know right. how to, to navigate in the business world and um, not be taken advantage of, not be mm -hmm. seen, you know, because as an artist, I think when you, when you get out there, you're like, Oh, I'll, you know, my work, you know, if, if somebody pays attention to you, that's worth a lot. You know, that's worth more, Mm -hmm. when you first start than money is because at, at the beginning I just wanted my work to be seen and, and mm -hmm. appreciated. And, you know, you don't realize it is a business until five years down the line when you need to make a living at it. So, yeah, um, there's, and, and when you're young, it's, it's really hard to figure out like how much do you price your work? How, you know, where, where do you go to, be seen in the ways right. you need to be seen. Yeah. So how do you go about, I mean, accomplishing those things? Is there like an agent that you can partner with or is there just a kind of PhD of the streets type thing? Or um, Yeah, I think, you know, if you're really good, if you're like the top line when you're get outside of school, I mean, there's grad school. That's like the buffer. Yeah. You know, that's another two years of work, you know, without the constraints of business and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I, I was lucky enough, I met someone in school that we started a company together and she was my agent for a few years and kind of 
She was tougher than me in the business world. You know, I, I was <laughs> Sounds like... Sounds like you guys made a good pair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, I loved to paint. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be in my studio painting. and But I think I was really scared about all the, you know, talking to... It, discussing money, you know, right. like yeah. popping that fear bubble of like, how much is my work worth? And mm-hmm. she, she allowed... She was like... She came from a different background. Her parents were you know, much more well off. And she came from New York. And Mm -hmm. so I, she was comfortable around that stuff and I wasn't. So Mm -hmm. she, we did make a good pair. She, she really taught me a lot about what I'm worth as an artist. And and in the, in that stage of my career um, was when the Braves started to discuss building a new stadium. So that it became much more clear of my vision kind of solidifies like, okay, this is my goal. I'm going to uh, work very hard to, to get to this position. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'd imagine you'd have to have a pretty strong partner or some type of business acumen. I mean, I was looking at the logos of the companies that you do work for and have partnered with over the past. I mean, you know, aside from your stuff being great and those people reaching out to you and say, yeah, like I want you to do something for us, everything in between to make sure you're taken care of. I mean, yeah. it had to have been a big part of it. Yeah, I th- I mean, I really enjoy the game of it. So I was in the background e- emailing people, you know, I would email the Braves like every month just saying, hey, this is what I did. This is new, new work. And any, you know, at the very beginning, I emailed anyone I thought would appreciate my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't care if they, my only goal was they, they read the email. I didn't care yeah. if they responded. I didn't care about, you know, if they got back to me or, if, but it, as long as people, we're opening the email and, you know, and I got a lot of positive, positive feedback from that. And I don't think if I didn't give that positive feedback at the very beginning of my career, I wouldn't have kept going, you know, if I wasn't, you know, make getting, I think that positive energy kind of moves you forward and the small wins Mm -hmm. at the beginning of your career, really, even if you're not making money, that's what leads you forward. You know, you, you look at that, you know, in sports, you got to have grit, right? Mm -hmm. You win, you lose, you know, you got to be able to handle the losses, handle the wins, right. you know what I mean? And, you know, when sports, you know, there's a lot of the same transitions over to business, right? And so when you're with the Braves, right, you was a pitcher for the Braves, mm-hmm. make sure if anybody, knows, if anybody knows that, right? So, and how long were you with the Braves? Uh, five years. Five years. Okay. And then when did you leave Atlanta? Um, I was released in 2012. Okay. And then after that, you decided to, you want to make art your full-time gig. Like this is your, what you want to do. Well, I mean, it was really, it wasn't as clear as yeah. that, you know. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> like yeah. I, I was, um, you know, with, I was in a relationship. I had, I, you know, got out of a relationship. I got released. I decided to go back to school all in the same year. Okay. And it was just a lot of, um, reckoning is happening you know like a lot of my my life up to that point was baseball like that's all i knew mm-hmm. and i i think it was a as much as it was uncomfortable yeah you know i had to get out of my comfort zone every single day in baseball but it was a safety you know i, mm-hmm. I was handled like as an athlete yeah. you know especially in the professional world you have so many handlers around you don't have to think about life you know yeah you just so focus on throwing the ball just man focus on throwing the ball <laughs> and and yeah. keeping your body in shape yeah. and um and so i think at, outside of baseball was like there was a loss you know it was a huge loss yeah. in my life and I think the only thing I knew I, I knew that I had this other thing in the back you know it was like my other talent that mm-hmm. I really hadn't explored yet so um, and I think at the end of my career I wasn't really happy you know there was a lot of stress and the higher you got the more like I just put so much stress on myself as an athlete um, to make it farther and farther you know Mm -hmm. so that was really hard I think I was just having nervous you know I just had a lot of tension in my heart and that's what you've known man yeah you know like think about that I mean you grew up and you've been throwing a baseball since you were probably like four years old oh yeah you know what I mean and that's all you've known yeah now all of a sudden it's gone Mm -hmm. you know now here shit real world hit you bro right you know it's on you know and so at the end of the day I mean that transition, how long did you kind of get into, so how long did it take you to get into what you're doing and, and, and where you're at now? I think two two or three years. Okay. Yeah. So um, because kind of, yeah. I, I had a year left of school, so I was drafted as a junior. So I knew I had I needed to go back to SCAD to get my, finish my degree. Mm-hmm. And that I went to school, back to school in that summer. I got released in May. I went to school in June. 
and finish like a summer summer semester and then i was like oh, i need it baseball yeah. was calling again i was like <laughs> i needed to so i i uh tr- moved to boston i trained up there with yeah. this group of people that was like really specifically for pitchers and then i got picked up by independent league team that next year that was like 2013 uh-huh. so i i needed to give baseball one more shot and you know, very quickly during that year, I was like in the best shape of my life, but I wasn't having any fun. I wasn't, it was just not the same. So I, I mm-hmm. knew, I, I think that year solidified like, okay, this baseball's done. I'm not going to think about it anymore. Right. And I'm going to focus all of my attention on, on my art. And that, so that, at that point, I moved back to Savannah, finished my degree. And I met Kate, who we started a business together during yeah. that time. So all those things kind of led, I think one thing leads to another, you know. Did baseball yeah. help you with your art? Oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, what you were talking about, just the grit, the, the determination, yeah. the um, every single yeah. day of just, like, working, having goals. Like, you know, I would get up in, as a baseball player and be like, okay, these are the things I want to accomplish today. And as an artist, if you don't have that, like, you're not going to, like, you can't get up and be like, okay, I'm going to paint. Um, you know, whatever, I don't know. So it was just like, I had so many goals I wanted to accomplish with my art and um, baseball. Like I, I was just bred that it was in bred in me that like that just wake up and accomplish things. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. So do you ever, do you ever like look back and say like, okay, today when I wake up, these are my goals. And then versus five years ago and just pinch yourself. Um, I think today I'm much more easygoing. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I think COVID really, you know, changed me a lot. I think when you accomplish all the things you say you want to accomplish and then you're still like not, you know, because I, I think, as an athlete, when you you think getting to the major leagues or the NFL or in the whatever, show, man, yeah, I get it. You think you're that's going to change your life, and it does. It changes your life, but you think you don't have anything to worry about, right. you, like ever again. It's not like that. Like once you get to the top, you have a million other things to worry about because you have so much money and so much attention and so much. So I think as an artist, like I accomplished all of these things. And I still wasn't truly happy, you know, like I just something like when I got the Braves project and that was finished, I thought like, oh, this is it. I'm in the show, you know, I thought and but it was still like I it was still a struggle. It's still like I had to keep moving forward. And I think that kind of changed because, you know, what I think I needed to get to that point to realize like um this isn't exactly what life's all about. Yeah. You know, it's important, and yeah. all these things. I think, in the grand scheme of things, I'm very proud and fortunate, and all those things of accomplishing mm-hmm. all of these different things. But you know, as a person, it does. You know, they're just accomplishments. There's just like they're they're great. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love. You know, I'm very happy that my art's everywhere. But yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know. As a human being, I think I, I've you know, there's yeah. still growth. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, a lot of, you know, artists, actors, athletes, they have a hard time in, in the business world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. and it's, and, 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 you know, they just do, you know, it's very few. How has that transition for you? Like, I mean, is it been like, you know, when you're focused on your artwork, when you're focused on pitching, okay, you're totally focused, you're zoomed in. Having those, you know, balance sheets, working on your money, making sure you're not overspending, to, you know, all the things that go into a business. You know, you have a partner with that, but I mean. Yeah. Not anymore. Not We're anymore. Not, okay. No, yeah. Okay. So h- how do you manage that in your head? Because that's got to be driving you crazy. Because it drives a lot of those people that are really artistic, just yeah. absolutely fucking nuts. You know what I mean? Well, by the grace of God, I go. go, you know. Like, uh, yeah. Because I, you know, <laughs> I'm, I just think whenever I'm working hard in the studio that things are going to happen. Okay. You know, I'm manifesting in the studio and that translates. But, I, you know, as I get older and, you know, I'm, this is my life now, I, I, I do think about, I think that's one of the things I'm still struggling with is, you know, the, the business sheets and, the, you know, the quarterly, you know, like I, yeah. I started my, this is hilarious, but I, um, you know, my, I have a business now. I'm like, with, you know, got this LLC with yeah. Kentucky and like I had to pay quarterly returns <laughs> on it. And I didn't know that. And the, uh, rev- I got this letter from Kentucky Revenue, like 
this this year and they're like you owe twelve thousand dollars because you haven't paid. i was like yeah. i make like 50 bucks <laughs> on my prints and that's what i have to pay yeah so it was just like i the things that i don't know you know come back to bite me and I, right. and i'm still learning you know i think um what i do know is i i know how i i love the game of the of the you know what's the next thing what's yeah. the next project um and I love creating and I love making people happy and I, I love bringing joy to the, uh, you know, somebody's home with a yeah. painting. Mm -hmm. And as a business person, um, I, I think I'm very good at um, getting that next project, getting yeah. um, people excited about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and my I think, you know, I've really, this is weird, but I, like I knew go, getting out of baseball, like my story was going to help, you know, the next part of my journey. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I, I think I've, um, used that a little yeah. bit and, um, and I, it is uh, like, it is a huge part. Like I wouldn't be the, who I am if I didn't have baseball in my life. That's right. So, yeah. um, but as a business person, like I'm not you, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I don't wake up and be like, oh, I'm gonna, um, I really I love, getting, but that's a lot you know, of people though, yeah, right? Yeah, a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. Right. And that's why we got you on here, right? Because right. a lot of people yeah. are having that problems, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And so how do you, how do you deal with some of those issues, man? I mean, do you just like, yeah. just say, let it go. I mean, do you have somebody you lean on? I mean, what's, yeah. you know, cause I know that's, just, I mean, that's just not your thing, right? No, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. Um, I think I'm learning to take responsibility okay. for that. You know, I think for me to be a whole, you know, for this to be a working business i i need to take responsibility for those things and learn as much as i can about right. them because it is it's smart to do that like i'm wouldn't be a good business person if i didn't pay attention to that sometimes right. you know not yeah. all the time but one day a week you know one day every two weeks right whatever. so you can pluck off some time and yeah. that's the thing see people yeah. get into this you know right. like they're just they're just focused on their craft right mm -hmm. and they just they don't think about the outside and like you said that right. the letter you got for yeah. for for sales tax right, right. you know yeah. but you got to spend some time if you're going to do this which is great you're chasing your passion right you're doing what you want to do mm -hmm. but you got to pay attention to those outsiding factors and spend some time to focus on those yeah see I'll, people don't get that right and one day every two weeks would be all you need really. yeah if yeah. you spent that whole day focusing on that right because all the boring stuff all the boring, boring stuff, stuff. Yeah. i hate the boring stuff yeah. i would i would spend a year not thinking about it the boring stuff and that's just the way i don't you know. worry we're the same way yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it's like a necessary evil type yeah. thing yeah. yeah yeah and i mean we we are in this structure of you know we operate within the government within you know all these structures that we're we're operating and so we have to um, the IRS doesn't listen to this. It's okay. No, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm a, if they came after me, I'm, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. That's I mean. fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so you, you know, you had talked about early on, you know, in your uh, career, like sending emails to people and it just being something that you wanted them just to read, you know, now as established as you are in all the work that you've done and people you've you partnered with, I'm assuming there's less emails going out saying, Hey, look at me. And it's more like, Oh my gosh, like what projects do I pick? Right, coming yeah. in. Yeah, I think there's a balance. Like at the beginning, you say yes to everything. Yeah. And that's just kind of how you you build momentum. But I think now there's discernment in what to say yes to mm -hmm. and not saying yes to everything because then you're, all the energy is going to these little projects when it could have been, you know, you could have saved yourself for a bigger project, you know. So mm -hmm. um, I think... COVID really affected that because there was a lot of momentum in 2019 yeah. for me. And I was like, Oh, 2020 is going to be the best year yeah. ever, you know? And so many people, you know, I know felt that. And then when COVID hit, it just, you know, it was like, okay. Like, what did you do during COVID? Did, when, I, you know, at the beginning, I, um, had a freak out, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> like everybody. I'm in prison, man. I, I'm in my, I'm in my yeah. house. I um, appreciate the honesty. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I, because I was my whole business model, you know, I, with all these big projects, you know, I get, I think there's, there's a focus on all of these like big projects and, and, but that only comes like once or twice a year, you know? So I was really trying to make consistent money with my print sales. And I was talking to the, Braves and Major League Baseball about selling my prints in stadiums and things like that. Yeah. And then COVID hit, and I was like, oh, I can't do that right now. So Stadiums are empty. Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, so I really, 
you know, my world just came to a halt. Yeah. And I, I didn't really know what to do. But also I realized how hard we all were working and like we were like I wasn't any happier than I was almost like it was a needed kind of break for for everyone to realize like we've been overworked we've been doing all this different these different things and kind of what's what's most important you know yeah. and and I think I realized like I love painting mm-hmm. I don't like I was spending 60% of my time doing all those business things emailing people getting spreadsheets together for revenue costs and so it just took away from me painting and yeah. I realized like okay like my like let's just focus on the large paintings that commission what makes you money man yeah, yeah that's just be realistic and yeah. I think I was in scarcity around like I'm not going to get another big project you know yeah. mm-hmm. so there was all this you know scarcity mindset as an artist because you never like I mean as a you never know when that big project's going to come you yeah know, I Last year, I made, you know, I made a pretty good amount of money in the spring. I didn't make money for six months. And then yeah. I made, you know, I got three more commissions in the fall and paid for my, you know, that whole Sounds like what year. we do. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't get paid unless we sell something, right? right? Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah. You have to trust in the process. You do. Yeah. You have to trust into it. You got to stick with yeah. it. And the times you just want to just say, screw it. You just got to keep focusing on doing it because it's yeah. going to happen. It just, it, we're in this, right. we don't, we don't paint or draw because I suck at that. Right. But I mean, we just, it's a different, it's a different world. Maybe right? that's what we should have done during this watch. <laughs> paint dude, something. dude, they'd have, I'd have to pay them to take my paintings. <laughs> Here, dude, here's $5 in a, in a portrait of. On a plant. Yeah. There you go. I mean, you know, it'd be horrible. Wow. Jesus. We I'm wouldn't sure do that to you. Like, so what do you think about <laughs> this? <laughs> earlier today? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You're in the same, you know, you're, you have to trust and you yeah. have to keep working and keep um, gaining momentum. And because if you do, I think in COVID, when everything came to a halt, all that momentum had to be gotten back. You know, it had to, yeah. you had to start spinning the wheels again. And I think I was really, um, I didn't know. I bought a building, you know, I bought yeah. a building in Portland, uh, in West Louisville. Mm. I've renov- been renovating that for two years. And Is um, that where your studio is? Yeah. Okay. I live, my studio is in, in Portland in this building called the Dolphinger that Gil oh, Holland yeah. owns. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, and I'm, but I'm transitioning my studio to my, the building I bought. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um. Also in Portland? In Portland, oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. It's an old storefront, so it's like commercial downstairs, residential upstairs, so. Yeah. It's a beautiful, it's like a 1915 old Beautiful, building. there's some beautiful homes yeah. down there. Yeah. yeah. What, so what, the what keeps you in that neighborhood? Um. Architecture? I love it there. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's right by the river. It's, um, I feel there's a certain anonymity I have there that I can just, do whatever you know i can be whoever i want to be there you know mm-hmm. i don't there's um and the people there are i mean uh, it's um light you know life is there yeah. it's people struggling people um just it's a whole different reality than than yeah. you know here yeah you know, it's it's a um but there's also beauty to that too there's, there's yeah, absolutely that, that was the prettiest i mean that's was louisville that was vintage louisville yeah. right there yeah. You go down, what is that, Portland Avenue, or is that, yeah. yeah. I mean, the homes are just huge, massive yeah. old mansions that were there. Mm-hmm. I just, mean, yeah. It's where Portland, or Louisville started. started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's cool, man, that yeah. you're doing that. Do you live down there, too, as well? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it's you know, it's different. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it sounds like that neighborhood almost kind of gives you inspiration a little bit. It definitely um, gives me a... Uh, like I feel in a place, you know, I mm-hmm. feel it's, there's a beauty to it. There's, it's by the river. There's history there. I feel yeah. like connected to another part of Louisville. It's almost not like not living in Louisville. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. because it, it, like people haven't changed there for 60 years. And no, they haven't. Yeah. yeah. The um, old civil war uh, hospitals right there too, as well. Mm-hmm. It's right there. Yeah. yeah. There's some good inspirational stuff there. Yeah. I can see that. From it's an a, artist, yeah, I can yeah. see that. I love the old buildings. So I really yeah. Love, yeah. Yeah. So you're originally from Louisville? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Grew up in St. Matthews. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. But I moved, you know, moved back here in 2016. Okay. Um, after being away for like yeah. 10 years, 12 years. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So just so I understand. So when you do a painting, 
like for example, the Braves just won. That was awesome, right? That yeah. that did that did your business pick up from that? Did anything They hired me again. They're, I'm painting five <laughs> paintings for them again. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so cool. it's that is that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that is outstanding. Yeah. So I mean, I, and I'm not an artist, so bear with me. So mm-hmm. when you when you do a painting, do they do like reprints of that too or is it just is it just one painting and that's it? Kind um of for them it would be one painting. I okay. mean, that would be a whole different licensing and i okay i would be open to that but um the paintings i have in their stadium are in the suite that's called the champion suites yeah. it's where like the the business it's like the three hundred thousand yeah. dollar suites that businesses buy for their clients and stuff like that yeah. so mm-hmm. there's this long winding hallway right behind the dugout or the uh home plate yeah that like they're all in there so five paintings for each world series win um, so now it's going to be 20 paintings in there. Dude, that's um, cool. wow. So, and that's really cool, man. Yeah, it's awesome. And when I go there, go to Atlanta, I'm like in the stadium, like this is cool. Like I'm a part of this stadium, which Dude, is it's, there, it's really cool. Um, I see you're in Cooperstown too. Yeah, I and that was one that I was going to bring that up. Yeah. That was one of the projects where I emailed them. I was like, hey, I would love to donate a painting. Yeah, to you guys. And the, he was like, well, let me talk to my committee and they voted and and so that was like the very first kind of big you know small win no, that i had yeah. and i don't you know so at the beginning i was like donating paintings i was trying to get my brand out there as you know as yeah. you know well as possible so um i've actually haven't been up to cooperstown to see it oh, <laughs> i need to take a trip you need to do that yeah, yeah. let but, me ask you this man so as an artist i know you've all your projects that you do everything's special <laughs> Do you have like one or two that are just like, man, that's really hits home? Yeah, I think the Braves project for sure, um, because that was just like a so full circle. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I was with the organization. They, and, you know, when I had their, the first meeting, they, they were like, you're back on the team. That's, you know, <laughs> that, so it was just like such a, and it was so emotional too, because, it was just a full circle experience and um, something that, you know, I, I manifested myself basically. Like, like they didn't yeah. come up to me and was like, we're like, we want your paintings. I was like approaching them for two years trying to yeah. like just break in, you know. And and finally they got the, you know, they had this meeting. and But so I think that project and then the, um, the Falcons project was cool too. The, okay, yeah. I painted the owner. I saw that. Uh, And this derby, you know, obviously Woodford, the Woodford project was amazing as far as being in Louisville. It was funny you say the Woodford thing too, because, you know, how to business and bourbon and then, you know, doing our homework on you (laughs) and all the, all the stuff. I saw the, uh, the Woodford logo on there and they were like, Oh, I hope we don't mess up like the bourbon selection. Oh (laughs) no, it's fine. Um, I love Woodford. Yeah. Yeah. um, yeah. But yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, they're they're great. So, how did you yeah. get that gig for the the guy that started the the Falcons owner started Home Depot too as well? Oh yeah, so, Arthur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you get that? Well, SCAD was curating their their stadium, so okay. they were the art um, the art producers for their stadium, and they okay. I like submitted my work. I really wanted to paint football players, but they yeah. were like. What, can you paint Arthur Blank? I was like, uh, I guess I can. <laughs> sure, it, it, yeah. yeah. Standing up there, all yeah. like majestic. It was like a four, can you four paint by me in like an painting? And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, yeah. you know, they were. I was like, oh, can I come down and take his photo and just do all these? Yeah. They were like, no, here's a photo. You got to dude. I should have so, Richard. Oh, so I should have photo. Richard take a picture of me and do like a fat Italian uh, <laughs> painting. <laughs> No, you need One to do the, si- the Seinfeld, the thing on the. Oh yeah, the Seinfeld was up there. Yeah, arch- yeah, that'd be dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't don't paint me. I'm just kidding. Just, please. No, yeah. but you can if you want. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do it. No, <laughs> so yeah, so from a, like a business standpoint, mm-hmm. and you know, like Sam keeps on saying, we're we're not artists. So like, you're in Portland. You're in your studio. You're a painting a painting, and then whether it's a month or six years from now, I mean, what's the process into where? you make money from it Mm -hmm. um as far as like how how quickly well not not even quickly just more so just like the process right like if i if i was someone and i'm considering you know pursuing my Mm -hmm. artist talent right and i'm like i'm like oh okay well how do i monetize like my passion yeah Yeah. um i mean like do you just like make paintings up or do you like get a project and then you get an idea from the project right how does that work i think at the beginning i was it was really self-manifested like i i wanted the you know the Braves project was a really big thing on my mind. So I was painting a lot of 
baseball, a lot of um, Braves paintings, just not selling them, but Donating. having a, you know, a collection for them to see. Oh, okay. Right. So I think, at, and at the beginning, wherever I wanted to see my artwork, whether it be in a football stadium or baseball, like I would make a collection of paintings for them to see and, you know, kind of envision what, the, what, you know, what you could do, what for I could type. do for them. Yeah. And, um, but as far as like, you know, that it depends, I think just talent, you know, luck is, a, you know, where, you know, as a fine artist, there's, I, you know, I'm a, commer like my work right now is very commercial. Right. I, I, my goal is to, with the sports and the equestrian is to have all, you know, I love painting original paintings. And I think if I really had, you know, my way or, you know, what my perfect world would look like, I yep. would just be painting commissions all day it, yeah. and then painting whatever I wanted. So commissions would be, commissions would be like, if, if I was like, you know, Hey, I've researched a bunch of artists. I reach out to you cause I really like your work and I want a picture above my fireplace or something. That would be what right. commission. Yeah. Would, like okay. if somebody wants a, a painting of some racehorses or equestrian painting of the Derby, yeah. you know, last year I painted this five by 10 foot painting for a, a couple in their house and, that was an awesome project. I mean, yeah. I was working on that thing for like two months, but oh wow! Um, and it, but it turned out so it was like got me out of my comfort zone. You know, I was focusing on one thing. I didn't have to think about emailing people for two months, and mm -hmm. so. Um, but there is kind of a beauty and a, a excitement in kind of chasing that next big project too, yeah. because as a business person, um, when you get that. Like with the Braves project, I had all this momentum. I, I reached, you know, contacted the press. I got all this like buzz around it, and then I started reaching out to the more people to being like, "Hey, this is what I just did." So I think there's just this uh, circle that happens. Like you have mm -hmm. to keep the momentum going. So yeah, and I think that's um, what I did pretty well for like four or five years there. Yeah, and I mean that led to. Uh, the Woodford project that led to the SEC, you know, I painted a bunch of SEC players. Yeah. And I, so it's really, I, but all this stuff is so out of my control. I really, you know, you can only do so much. You yeah. can't just, that's what I was going to say. You can only paint. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, do you have like a backlog of orders now? I mean, if things that people want paint it or um, not right now, I think I've really, the last two years, I basically been working on my house and, okay. Cool. Um, uh, you know, the last year I was the I had the Woodford project, and then I got I had a lot of um, derby paintings to paint last year, yeah. and then the Braves have you know they won, yeah. um, and they called me up, and that was amazing. Um, but really, I think it's just been like there is like this start, you know, momentum starting again. I'm trying to right. figure out, you know, that what's that next step? Do you see yourself going more toward? You know, not, so you're in the you're in obviously in the athletic space, right? But do you see yourself going more to like businesses or more to personal? I mean, what do you what's your, what's your roadmap? Do you think? Do you see? I mean, or just wherever I guess whoever pays you, right? Or what do you think? What's yeah, your... I think I'm. I would love to to branch out and just start painting uh, more personal work or yeah. work that is because I think what had what happened is like I you know, accomplish all of these things that were on my goal, goal list. And, but I was just making up new goals. I was, so there wasn't, I wasn't really inspired by a lot of this stuff. I, I was working on the last few years. So right. I think, you know, what I want to find joy in my work, you know, yeah. I, and it, I love painting. I love the process of it. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, if I'm a sports artist the rest of my life, I don't think I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I need to, tri you know, there's evolution to yeah. everything. And I think the sports art, the equestrian art, it will always be there. And I can, I love doing it. I'm, you know, good at it. But I, and I think it, you know, obviously it pays the bills sometimes, but uh, I'm not, I want to explore and, and kind of tap into um, some of the, you know, some of the other things. Yeah. 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 I mean, do you see yourself? I mean, again, I'm not an artist, but like more of the, like the naturals, like natural kind of paintings, uh, the, those kind of impressions kind of things. Am I, am I yeah. saying that right? Yeah. Like impressions, like yeah. landscapes. And yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks well, for guiding me in that. Um, so, yeah. I think, I don't know. I think, you know, if I could go in the studio and whatever comes out, 
that that would be and whatever you know whatever that is i think if you because it, when you're committed to it like i don't think i've really committed myself to a studio practice i've ch you know gotten the projects got i'm my whole artistic practice is based around building a business and, right. and mm -hmm. kind of keeping keeping it going and i think it's that's great and that's really it's got me to where i am but as far as like being an artist and being in the studio every day and committing to what comes out there i think that's it's different than say somebody it's like hey you know can you paint right the braves celebration paintings no i get yeah. you yeah um, Who's your, who is your favorite artist um or do you have I, two? I love the impressionists you know okay. as a, but as far as like who, you know who i look to now i think there's a lot of these i love murals so okay. I, there's all these mural artists that i follow on instagram okay um and then an Artist in town, Stan Squirewell. He's a um, he he does a lot of mixed media stuff. He he's in the same building that I am. So oh, really? He's a really great artist. Would you ever do a mural? Um, I I thought I was wanting to do those a few years ago, and I I think it was one of those things where I was like, it was too big of a like I was scared. I I didn't take that first step, and t you know because. Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe now. I'll, hey, man, I'm you're an artist. You got to yeah. step out, man. Know, That's what you got to do. Yeah. That's part of it. You're out there. You're yeah. putting it out there. So it, again, we so you, about doing murals. So, do you think Louisville needs some more of those kind of murals? Because you know, you go to other cities, right? You'll see some really cool spots, and they got like really cool, like artistic murals, and it, it's just an expression of of the community, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you go to Nulu, you see some stuff, you know, or you see graffiti. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean. Do you think Louisville could use more murals? Um, well, murals were, I mean, they're still popular, but they become hugely popular yeah. like 10 years ago, 10, you know, five, 10 right. years ago. And I think there's still merit to them. They do bring a community together. Yeah. And, you know, you see in New Lou, mm -hmm. um, there's businesses built around them. You know, it, it, it solidifies an area. You know, I think I, I, I have an idea of like painting regular people that live in Portland and, and Shawnee, all, you know, he, like all yeah. these murals and just like, I think that would be really cool. But, um, so I think there's definitely merit. There's definitely value to, to doing that. I, you know, there are a lot of artists in Louisville that do murals and do really great work. Yeah. Um, I think I've just, um, needed a little push, you know, I yeah. think I'm in this space where I've been, you know, like growing as a business and kind of, have a this path that I've like kind of laid out. It's very niche. It's I've haven't. There's not a lot of room for like, you know, to yeah. to grow. So I think now I just need to like expand my path a little bit more. And, you know, they did a study in New York. I saw this on TV. This is really cool. Uh, Whenever you do murals in in community environments, it reduced graffiti by thirty five percent. Oh, I can see that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. People weren't apt to write over it, do right. over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and graffiti. An artistic expression it too, is. I guess. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's every time a I sit in front of a train, I notice that. <laughs> you what? Every time I sit in front of a train going by, I yeah. notice that. I, I, I'm, but some of them are awesome. Some of them are <laughs> like I yeah. live by a train tracks, and like I see some really great stuff yeah. there. And you know, it's it's countercultural. It's not you know, I think building owners hate it yeah. because they have to pay for it yeah. to get it removed and all that stuff. So, and but murals do make a place more beautiful, and I think. You know, graffiti artists, if they see a building has a mural on it, they're not going to yeah. graffiti over that. That's just kind of, that's not very fun for the artist. Right. You know? mm -hmm. So um, so those people, you know, that are in Louisville, just picking a city because that's where we're in. And so they're doing graffiti as an expression. Like, do you think that if people would continue to do that, like, do they need, like, help finding, like, a more productive, like, outlet? you think they need to partner with other artists or... I think they're perfectly happy where they're at. You know, I think yeah. it's a part of their, there might be some anger or some frustration or some, um, or the, you know, there's a community around that. Like they have mm -hmm. a very strong community because I mean, that's really challenging work, honestly. Like they yeah. have to be out there at night and get up on all these high structures. So I think there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of trust in that community. Yeah. Um, if you think about it like that, but obviously, um, you know, I think as a city, you know, there's there's graffiti everywhere. I think right. New York is like there has been have been uh, graffiti artists in New York that have 
gone into mainstream galleries. They and do it now, yeah. Like a you yeah. know multi million dollar career out of their Absolutely. art. So yeah. there, that is a a start to you know a career. Some of these guys have agents, and I swear it's a true story. I was watching Shark Tank again, okay, and this girl was on there, and she was doing that, and she represents all these artists that do murals and graffiti, and she starts in New York City, and she now she's spanning it out into different cities doing it, mm-hmm. and these artists have a place to go out there and, and get their artistic stuff, and they're making money doing it because these, like for example, you've got a rundown building, like you know, like it's a four story apartment complex, but it's run down. It needs it needs. But instead of painting it, they have these murals that they just like really cool and expressive, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it and it creates color and it pops and it, mm-hmm. it makes the community more vibrant, right. you know. And these guys are making money doing that. Yeah, like, I know we're getting sad, sad on it, but you know, I mean, there's a the Philadelphia uh, mural program is one of the best in the country, and they, yeah. their murals are like people go there just to see the mur- murals, and oh, I well. mean, they, they've created a huge business around. And and now they they go to other they've come to Louisville to help artists in Louisville create you know really? murals so there is a huge community element to the murals I think um, and Louisville should tap into that more yeah. um, and and um, I think Louisville it's interesting like has Louisville has so many artists so many amazing artists but I feel like just from my perspective they're we're all isolated from each other yeah. there's no I mean I'm in Portland there's artists in Portland there's artists in Nulu there's artists but there's no like kind of unifying. Um, I don't know, and I don't know if no, other no, no, have like that. getting together on Thursday for bunko or nothing. I mean, like I, have, that kind of I have some friends that you know, five guys. <laughs> that, but like, I just feel like we're all struggling to for the pot. You know, the pot's small yeah. in Louisville. We're yeah. all struggling to like, and so there's this competition and there's this insecurity in the in Louisville art art community that. The pot's infinite, you know. We yeah. if we if you look outside of Louisville, like my, most of my work is not in Louisville. Right. If yeah. if it was, I wouldn't be you know an artist. Matt, so, now the same way. I mean, yeah. a lot of our stuff. Is, I mean, we don't do it. We do a lot in Louisville. But most of our stuff is outside of it. it's in all fifty states. We right. do. We we you know you have to. It, the, the world shrunk, right? Let's just be realistic. Yeah. You know, and back in the day, you had to live and die by your community. But right. I mean, the the world you have to go outside your environment if you want to make it. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I I agree, and I mean, I think. That's why I have, um, I love Louisville because I don't have to always right. be, you know, kind of chasing what Louisville has to offer. I think, yeah, um, every the whole, like you said, the whole world has everything to offer, and the sky, you know, your imagination is your only yeah. limiting factor. So um, I love, and that's why I love painting sports because there's so yeah. many sports teams. There's so and all like athletes and, um, you know racehorses like they're all like competing in such a uh intense moment yeah. and like i love capturing that moment and like that intensity and that can be found in many different avenues so yeah um, so what your biggest what was your biggest project like size wise what's like your biggest project the braves project for sure no i mean like oh. so, like like a painting like, oh I'm the sorry. painting oh yeah. the whitford project actually was the the original painting the original paintings were four by eight feet Holy moly. Um, and they're in the, if you ever go to the Woodford um, distillery, they're in their yeah. gift shop. What do you I get think. stuff for like that? Canvases and um, stuff like that? So I'm watercolor, I paint on paper. So it's watercolor paper. And I get these okay. big rolls, like 55 inch rolls that kind of, I can cut them to yeah, size. Yeah. But for canvases, there's, uh, you know, places in New York, you can buy big canvases and oh, they wow. ship them. And, you know, there's a few places in Louisville that you can find larger scale. Canvases. Where do you get your art supplies from? If you don't know, really um, it's Blick.com. Okay. It's uh, an yeah. online store. Um, mm. And then artists and craftsmen in Louisville, I should probably shout them out because they they okay. do have great stuff. And but I, you know, as you know, an artist, I really need to learn how to be a woodworker too because you can mm. make your frames. You can do you can do a lot more, have a lot more flexibility with what you're creating if you know how to make your frames and stuff like that so let me ask you like your your studio that you have is it like like you know like ocd like very neat or is it like mad scientists like uh watch your step i would say it's a little both if i'm in the middle of a project it's a little like stuff's everywhere and then it's like kind of when it when the project's done i see like oh there's like i just clean up and it's like okay now it's pretty clean again but yeah. when i'm in the middle of it i just go in there and but it's also like i have a couch i take naps and i read in there and so it's kind of a like my sanctuary yeah. also yeah. so there's i like to keep it a little bit organized and mm-hmm. if it if it's too messy i can't work like i need some 
clarity, you know. And yeah. Um, Do you I, listen to music? Yeah, anyway? all the yeah. time. All yeah. the, I think that's kind of what runs through. You know, the it, once I started the project, I need to get like focused, and and that was always a huge thing in baseball. I would um, listen to Tool and try and get pumped. Heck up yeah, and, man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, um, that's a great one. Just yeah. like. You know, getting that head I got to put the mech in my like, playlist. I totally forgot yeah. about Tool, man. They had some good songs. They, yeah, they're, yeah. I mean, they're really. I I'm glad you said that. Yeah. yeah. They, were, they were intense, but, like, you, when I was pitching, like, I needed to be intense. And, and yeah. that's not my personality. I'm not an intense guy all the time. You know, I think I can get there, and I, I used to get there a lot in as a pitcher. But, you know, when I'm in the studio, it's more like, like just rhythm and, yeah. and like, electronic just you know, a cycle repeating. I need to get like, I f like in a trance almost. You yeah. Know, so. Are you are you like Bob Ross? Do you know who that guy was? Yeah. Do okay. you know who that guy was? <laughs> Dude, I'm just he's old man. You know what I mean? Like he, he blew was up on YouTube. I, yeah. I think they're yeah. like, my 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 11 year old daughter. I know who like, Bob Ross yeah. is. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm just saying because yeah. I mean, like he was like I was a little kid and he was yeah. painting my, and he was yeah. so smooth mm, and just I'm, chill with a big afro and yeah. he like, eh. my, my 11 year old daughter has like Bob Ross like t-shirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bob Ross is great, man. They've really branded him well. They did. Yeah. Are you, you're not like Bob Ross in there, do you? you no, know, I'm not right. painting happy trees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a little bit more like just like you know, you just, I got a you. little bit more mad scientist. Gotcha. Than, you know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm interested to know, like, from a business perspective, you know, you talk about like artists, and then you know, whatever in your instance, like things that they're painting. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always wondered about like a market for artist content that isn't necessarily like the end result but it's like the process right mm -hmm. so like videos of like someone creating yeah. something you know have you ever is there people that you're familiar with that have ever done anything like that or have you ever thought about that of a video you know creating um yeah. content around the creation yeah. yeah 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 i you know if i was a little bit more outgoing i probably would do that but yeah. <laughs> um, you know i really have a I think I that's one of the if I was doing that I probably would a lot more people would know about me you, know? you should do like a webcam just get like a little thing yeah, going on man I, just, I don't know no? I think if I if somebody was in there doing it and I didn't have to think about it that would be fine yeah but like um you know I, I need all, all these things are great things to yeah. do I think um but I've just haven't gotten out of my comfort zone to do them and as an artist like even as a baseball player, I was pretty shy, you know, yeah. like I'm not like, I like talking to people I love, yeah. but I'm in the studio. It's like, you're alone. You're, you're doing yeah. your thing. And you know, when you invite somebody in, even if it's a webcam, it's like a different experience, I guess, you know, but, that's, that, that's uh, your private area. No, I get it. Yeah. Of, yeah but, but as a business, it would, you know, I think it would be very valuable and I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. This is not um, for you. Do, I don't yeah, know. Do, do what I Come say. on, man. Yeah. You're putting pressure on the guy. Yeah. Man. Yeah. No, no, that's, I, that's not what I mean. No, I, but, <laughs> man, but, man, I'll be at your window with a camera. Like, yeah. <laughs> look at him go, man. Yeah. The process is awesome, though. I love the process. That's why I paint because of the process. It, it's yeah. like, it remind watercolor, you know, because it's all these large scale watercolor paintings, I can't mess up. So there's a lot of focus and a lot of intention. Yeah. And, you know, very much in the moment. And it reminds me of playing a sport. It reminds yeah. me of uh, pitching. And I think that's why I still do it, because it, you get to a space where you're so in the zone and you have um, clarity and you, what's that flow state? You know, yeah. you're in mm -hmm. the flow state. And in, in painting, you can get there pretty easily. And it's hard to stay there. It's because now I used to paint really quickly. I used to want to get these paintings done in like a day. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and just get them done, get them over with, I, because I was nervous around it. You know, I was yeah. like, I don't want to mess up. But uh -huh. but now I'm like taking more of my time and knowing what the process is, and so um, so I'm getting in these flow states quicker, but also less time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just being very intentional about like, okay, I'm going in there. I want to get this section done. It's almost like you have to get in there and get out and yeah. um, with watercolor because if you stay in there too long, you just kind of lose focus. Do you um, sketch it out before you? Okay. Yeah, right. I do. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I work from photographs. So I'll usually I'll combine like three or four different photographs. If there's, if it's a scene, if it's, you know, just one player, I'll try and get the lighting from one picture right. and 
try and like look at a lot of different photos before I paint and just bring out what what you know and because of baseball because I played I think like I've you know as a yeah. if I'm painting a pitcher or a hitter like I've been there I've like you know know what right. they're going through and I, I love um I think that's you know why I still paint paint sports too because I've it reminds me of you know yeah. of that so I mean, you, you can put yourself into their position. You get it, right? You're, you empathize with it because you know it, yeah, right? You yeah, in And that, that moment of, like, just everything's on the line. And, um, yeah, and, I mean, I wasn't – I didn't pitch in the big leagues and the big games, mm. but I, I definitely um, – it was it was definitely real. You know, I definitely yeah. – um, it was the same process. Is baseball your uh, – out of all the sports, is baseball your, your, like, favorite one to paint? Or do you like football, basketball, or does it matter? Or – I think I love the 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 so zeroing in on the the moment the players and like kind of yeah like painting a, you know painting scenes I think football is amazing because there's so much going on there's so yeah. much action yeah. uh-huh. so many uniforms I think um, basketball is great because all this movement there's right. so much more movement than baseball is and there's like people's limbs are going everywhere. Yeah, right? yeah that's. I was yeah. gonna say, like painting a baseball has got to be more of like an isolating kind of experience, right? It's nine players versus twenty-two, right? You know, right. And it's usually just like the pitcher and the hitter. It's just two people, like, and the whole field is involved. But like, there's a battle going on between these two right. people. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and football, it's more of a, you know, this c- collision. And I, yeah. I've always wanted to paint hockey, though. I think hockey's really. Like their their uniforms are really cool and mm-hmm. just yeah I've never never got you ever reached out to NHL I you know at some point I have just because I wanted to you know I had this vision of like when I got the Braves project I was like oh I can paint paintings for every stadium yeah. in the in the <laughs> United States, you know like in the world I, in the world like <laughs> let's just go so I started like just reaching out to all these people and like I had you know they responded and had all these things in the works like the rangers were building a new stadium yeah. and but i mean nothing panned out from all that and it yeah. was so much energy and effort and i was just like let's just scale it back let's yeah. you know um and and i think you have to trust in the process you can't yeah. force the process the braves um you know and, and the derby and so I, you know as a sports artist um i love the water, watercolor just because it reminds me of the sport and yeah. the, and you know where whatever happens I think you know like we were talking about I need to put myself out there more I need to like reach out more and, and get back into that game because I think I kind of removed myself from the game of it all and it was like okay like p- things are coming to me but as in life like that's yeah. not always you can't always trust that you you have to Put yourself yeah. out there. You know, in business, you said something really great. You said you got to trust the process, not force the process. Mm-hmm. And that applies to business. It applies to everything that we do, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, when you get desperate or you're trying to force something, it, it very rarely can go through, right? right. But you got to trust your process, stick yeah. with your goals, stick with what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. It, it'll happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think when you when you try and force it, it's based in fear, you know, yeah. and scarcity. And, and when you're creating from fear, you're going to create more fear. And, yeah. um and I think, but when you're in flow and then, you know, when I'm in the studio painting, like I'm not thinking about fear, you yeah. know, I'm not thinking about scarcity. I'm, I'm yeah. painting and, and whenever I, I feel really good when I have like, t- you know, five, 10 paintings in the studio finished and I'm like, okay, where are these going to go? Now I can think about where they're going to go. It almost yeah, sounds soothing. Well, yeah. it's, you know, yeah, it's like you're just the, sitting in there just <laughs> focusing yeah. on it. The, I mean, the, it's yeah. gotta be yeah. Yeah. the three P's it's like pro- a yeah, process. Persistence and patience. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, you know, like right now, I think of, you know, the the big project's almost done. Yeah. And, you know, there's always a point when you're like, okay, what's going to happen now? Um, and I think I'm, you know, it's, it's easy to get back into the scarcity mode of like yeah. the fear mode. But I've always, and with baseball too, I was like, if, as long as I'm working hard at baseball or like in, in that, you know, going, doing the daily things I need to do, yeah. wherever I get to is where I'm, you know, I'm meant to go. So I think as long as I'm painting in the studio and, and kind of, and not, th- you know, you can't think about what you can't control. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. 
Circle of influence, yeah. That's yeah. why it's funny you've mentioned, you know, manifesting, you know, things a couple of times. I think mm-hmm. that's just trusting in the process and in yourself and knowing that at any given point in time you're doing the right things for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and feeling worthy, you know. I think as a, as a small business and an artist, like, I think at the beginning it's hard to feel like you're worth what yeah. you're doing, you know. And you yeah. have to um, – know your worth and and um and that takes a while like at the beginning like i said i didn't know my worth mm-hmm. i had somebody telling me that <laughs> i'm worth it you know yeah so it's <laughs> it's it's funny and you use the word worth right and so and part of what we do is you know like valuating businesses and and speaking to people that want to sell things and what's realistic and what the market is telling them is or isn't you know from from, from that perspective i mean how does how does one go about finding your worth in the beginning and how much of that is determined by outside versus kind of what you're feeling? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think at the beginning, it's a little bit of like throwing stuff out there, seeing what sticks. I mean, I, I was selling paintings for, you know, when I first started, I was like $200. Okay, take it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah. when the Braves project came out, came along, like they were going, you know, we played big. We, I sold, you know, 15, or 18 paintings for $5,000 each. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, but I was so scared of that. You can't you be know? scared, man. That's how I was all like, the time. You gotta go for it. You gotta like, go for it. Yeah. I'm going to get annihilated. They're going to yeah. say, no, they're going to like, just, just yeah. be like, well, yeah. And then, and then they're like, yeah, no problem. And then you're like, shit, should I have asked for 10,000? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <000?" laughs> right. Like, so there, and then that was, so once the Braves project happened, that was the base. That was a foundation of a, of what I'm going to do next, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. you can't go down if right. uh, but they're, they're all based in scale so it just depends on the size and all that stuff so i think artists kind of do it per square inch you know yeah. and that's a pretty good model and um well per square inch what do you mean well like valuing the painting per square like whatever per square inch like oh color. really oh. Yeah. so we do like like per square foot, foot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and a lot of like the stuff that the, we do so that's interesting that, yeah yeah well uh, yeah, if it was per square foot for a painting, it'd be a pretty big painting. <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt. Um, but and now, like, See, I'm I did just, not know yeah. that. So they do it by that's a square inch, really. As a fine artist in yeah, in okay. the illustration world, with more commercial stuff, there's like yeah. you can go online to figure out what's the base, you know, yeah. salary for this type of project or that type of project. So there's more of a guided outline for illustration. Who's that determined by? Like the directory of illustration and New York, you know, kind of like, because there's a, in the commercial art world, there's a, it's a huge business and there's all, all these data out there. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tell you, yeah, it's huge. Look at yeah. They got much arts out there and all these commercial offices, commercial yeah. buildings. And when I think of like commercial art though, too, I think of like, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Like the office in Denver Mifflin when they had to try the picture of the office. Is no, that what you're thinking no, of? No, I'm thinking of like like commercials, like logos, like in like yeah, commercials. Or like, yeah, or like you're like cruising downtown and there's like a big logo on a building, like Eli Lilly we like brought gra- up earlier. Graphic design. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would, when I say commercial, I'm like the Woodford project. That was a commercial project. Gotcha. Um, okay. For me, it's like the illustration project. Like if I had a painting on like a magazine cover or – something like that yeah um and and i i wanted you know i've worked with a few ad agencies to there's all this ad agency that's ad what ad i was getting yeah at. sorry um so there's i mean it's a broad spectrum yeah um, mm-hmm. but i think as a for me that type of work is great but like it's not all i want to do yeah. i love yeah. i just like i said i like yeah. to be in, in my studio painting so what what keeps me in there is you know the commissions and the yeah the small stuff the jobs yeah right? the yeah. jobs so mm. and um kind of the do you the, ever just like paint anything just like just uh, feel the urge to start painting something did um, you ever do that i used to i okay. that's what the all those draw those sketch drawings yeah. i used to, i have them on my website those I, are great yeah i love doing that i haven't done that in years just because it's like a, a job now so yeah. when i get home i'm like i don't want to i don't want to so, draw so, so what do you do in yeah. your free time uh i play i like playing video games and yeah. working out and running uh, absolutely being outside um biking yeah. Just, um, yeah, like being kind of the balance of being outside and being yeah. inside. So yeah. normal, yeah. famous artist shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm all, like pretty chill. Like I'm not like, you know, I used to pre 2020, I was like, you know, there's, I think I, for a, most of my life, I needed 
like approval from like outside like as a baseball player you get all this approval you know like all these people pointing to you like and it's just a hole that you fill you know like and even as an artist like at the beginning i was like i want to do this because people will think i'm this you know but that doesn't really make you happy that's not you know gonna fulfill you so i'm you know what brings joy to me now is just being you know, happy in my house. You know? That's it. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> you think COVID had a, played a part in that? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Huge reckoning COVID, yeah. you know, like huge, just like change of um, everything. Changed. It did. Everything did. So it's changed. It's changed. All, yeah. yeah. No, it's changed our business environment. Think really? about it. Yeah. Think about it. We're, we're, people are still working from homes. We have mm-hmm. hybrids now where you can work home office, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, 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 and people are getting adapted to that. They, mm-hmm. they, they can do that now, you know, yeah. cause the internet obviously yeah. and, 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 and how we've shrunk our world a lot, you know, I just, you know, when you look at it from the back in the day when you were doing it, I mean, if you didn't have COVID, you might not even be where you're doing what you're doing right now. No, I think I would be still trying to make this print business work out. Right. Just mm-hmm. really just working and, and not, I don't know, it might have worked out, maybe. And it's still, like, I still have paintings in the Brave Stadium. It's working yeah. out. But, like, before COVID, I was, like, really, every day I was in there just, like, what's what's going on? Like, I needed to, like, yeah. there's all this pressure on me. It was almost like I was getting to the point where I felt like baseball was, you know, when, when I was putting so much pressure on myself. So it was a good reset, almost. Yeah, it was a, I mean, it was needed, for sure. I, at the time, I didn't think it was it was uh, hard. Like yeah. I was depressed for like four months, but right. you know, I, I, no. on I mean, the other 12 side months in a year. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> on the other side of that, I was like, okay, I'm not dead. You know, <laughs> things are going to be okay. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, but that's, I think a lot of people had that. A lot of people, you know, there was one day in COVID, like, I don't know, it was in March or when everybody was just walking outside. Do you remember that? Yes. Like just people that there was no cars on the road, just people were outside being like, Oh, what's this? This is right. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. And that was like, Oh my God, people just did not take the time to, to like stop going. Like it they, did. It, yeah. Yeah. It but, brought America back a little bit. It brought the world. It. You know like, what I mean? Like you, know. you just, I remember that. I know exactly. Yeah. You're like, I've never seen some people walking around yeah. before. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you know what was funny. Yeah, but but what was funny when people were doing that though too is you had all these people out walking on like either side of the street, and then like they would like come <laughs> up to each other uh-huh. because that was when there was like more unknowns than oh, knowns right. with yeah. COVID, Absolutely. and so then these yeah. people are like, "Well, who's going to walk on the grass? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like who's going on the street?" There was like the yeah. bubble was like <laughs> ten feet <laughs> yeah. instead yeah. of like two feet. Dude, yeah. my favorite thing is people yeah. walking outside with a mask on and they're by themselves. I'm yeah. like, really? I mean, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I think there was so much, like you said, so much unknown at the beginning. Like people, yeah, it, there was just a lot of fear, and uh, I mean, obviously, yeah, for good reason. Yeah. You know, people were, people have been dying a lot. So oh, it's almost a million people uh, to COVID. That's crazy. And I mean, yeah. I, I I know four or five people that have passed away wow. from COVID. Wow. I mean, think about it. Yeah. And we we hear all the lunacy stuff. I don't want to go down the political aisle, but yeah. I mean, it's just you know, it's just amazing how businesses and folks have adapted yeah. during that time right. of that pandemic. Yeah. You know, and how that pivot is creating you to come out of it and what your goals are coming out of it. Right. You know what and I mean? You, and goals that you didn't have before. And, yeah, absolutely. And it's really and brought my world smaller, I yeah. think. And I'm not, I'm trusting more in the, you know, just the, like, tr- in the, like, the daily things. I don't yeah. know. Like, I, it, it's just, not, I'm not worried as much about what's going to happen next. I know that um, things are going to work out. And, yeah. you know, I'm not... And also, I'm not striving for so much. I'm not, I don't want this huge, like, I don't really want to be uh, going so hard, like, yeah. all that work. I was driving to Atlanta, like, two times a month. I was just trying to make everything work, yeah. saying yes to everything. And now I'm, you know, saying yes to a lot less and just, you know, have a lot more time for myself. So Well, yeah, and now uh, over time, right, you're more comfortable with, I think, yourself probably, mm-hmm. right, your 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 product and your worth, yeah, you know. So, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's all growth. I mean, there's a evolution to it all. And mm-hmm. um, as a business person, there's, I think, just from how I was raised and brought up, like there was a lot of fear around money. And so all these fear bubbles I'm popping are, based in, in money and like, oh, can I do this on my own? Do I have, like, I think for most of my life, I relied on somebody else to like help me, you know? Yeah. Right. And I think 
you know, post 2020. Emotionally and financially, right? Let's yeah. think about that. I mean, right. personal gratification, sure. right? Yeah. You know, and the financial gratification. Yeah. Right? And, and I getting... didn't think I could do it on my own. Yeah. So I think this, now I'm like, I can do it on my own. It's hard. Yeah. There's a lot of fear bubbles I'm popping. And, but, but I'm figuring it out that like, I'm not relying, I'm taking responsibility for myself, yeah. you know, you're an entrepreneur, man. Yeah. And that's what it's about. You know, you got to take the first step. You can't right. be scared. Right. You got to take it and you just got to go with it. And you're going to go through those downs and those ups, but you got to stick with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, it's, sure. it's yeah. a great I, story. Yeah. I like the responsibility part though, too, because mm-hmm. you know, it's like, it, it's easy to blame other things and other people and say, Oh, well they shouldn't have done that. Or, well, right. you're the master of your own destiny, for right? Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your, your world is reflecting what your, you know, your thoughts are. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, um, there was a lot of, um, you know, respond like I was like, oh, okay, you can do this. Like I'm, I'm not going to take responsibility yeah. for that. I'm, you know, I'm going to rely on. I don't know. It was, but there was a lot of um, just really turmoil too. Like inside, like I'm not, like all these things were going on. All these cool, cool stuff was going on, and mm-hmm. I was just going and going and going. I wasn't really like enjoying it. And I think yeah. through baseball too, you know, if I could do one thing like take one thing, you know, do one thing in the past is like, I would enjoy the, the moment more. Like yeah. I was every single day. I was like, okay, like what do I do to get to the next step? Yeah. What, so what, many what, athletes what, say that, yeah, you know, yeah. we talked to tons of, we get it right. Yeah. And they always say, I wish I would have enjoyed the moment better. Yeah. Or I wish I would have given back more to the community instead of wasting it on dumb shit. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. There's always that sign that, you know, the, but the ones that listen and understand and get it, uh-huh. that's why we have the show. Right. Yeah. So that people that listen to this, can maybe absorb it and say, you know what? This is where I want to be. This right. is, but I want to do this. And, and so if this is, this is great knowledge. No, thank you. This is, yeah. this is great. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. So how do people get a hold of you? They want to, they want to pass yeah. some, yeah, uh, plug hey, away. Plug yeah, away. Um, my website, Richard Sullivan illustration. Uh, you can just Google Richard Sullivan art and my okay. stuff will come up and my, um, yeah, my website, my email address is richardsullivanart.com. Probably okay. feels good to say that. You just Google my name. And <laughs> Google my, stuff my will name. Come up. <laughs> <laughs> just Google uh, my name. <laughs> Bitch, just Google my name. Uh, <laughs> I don't say that a lot. So, <laughs> That's so, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, and I I love to, um, you know, right now I'm painting a lot of horses, a lot of equestrian. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a, I love doing that in Louisville. Um, and any, you know, I love painting athletes and yeah. stuff like that, so. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the next step is. I have a sh- derby show in April at Louisville Stoneware with okay. a group of artists. So, um, when is that? When is that's it? April 22nd, but I'm not, okay. I'll, g- I'll get that to you and you can yeah, get it. We're, yeah, we'll put yeah. it in there. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it'll be an interesting year. Yeah. I, we look forward to it. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks again for coming. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's for the bourbon. Yeah, we'll have to have you back again. Yeah, I hope so. Time. Yeah. <laughs> sure thing. Yep. Cheers, right, my cheers. friend. Cheers. Yeah, he did even. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to our fifth episode of the How To Business Show. If you're interested in learning more about Richard Sullivan and his art, check out his website, richardsullivanillustration.com. Link will be in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to stay up to date with upcoming episodes and what we are doing behind the scenes, make sure to follow us on social media. You can connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and our website, www.htbshow.com. Finally, if you have a story to share or some feedback for the show, feel free to contact us at htbs at gillizenteam.com. Important links for today's episode can be found in the description. From all of us on the How To Business team, keep sipping and keep listening.